Hi, I'm Elizabeth, this is The Bookish North, and I'm here today to do a review of the novella Science Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera, translated from the Spanish by Lisa Dillman. Uh, this was first published in Spanish in 2009, and this English version in 2015. Uh, this was a book I really enjoyed. I would go so far as to say it's my favourite book of the year so far. Uh, and even though it's a very short book, it's only 107 pages, it really packs a lot of punch. Um, most of that is because it's a book that can be read on many levels, uh, which I really appreciate. Uh, and on the most surface level, this is the story about a young girl called Makina, who, although the nationalities uh, are never mentioned in this book, it's quite clear that she is a Mexican girl who uh, are going across the border to the US to uh, find her brother and bring him back home with her. So at the core this is a classic quest story of someone going someplace to fetch something and go back home again. Um, so there's that part of it. Uh, still on the surface level I would say that the writing in this book is beautiful. I really enjoyed the way the sentences was built, the imagery and the flow of the language. I'm not sure how much of that to attribute to Yuri Herrera or how much to the translator Lisa Dillman, but I think it's safe to say that they both have done a pretty good job with this book um, and I was really enjoying reading the prose in this and I think probably the most impressive thing is how much can be said in so few sentences, in so uh, few pages and um, that's pretty impressive. That's something a lot of uh, authors uh, could learn a lot about actually. There are many books that are way too long and this is not one of them. I'm gonna read just a small passage. Uh, you have to Excuse my uh, reading um, because this is not my native language, but I'm going to try to do as good as I can. And me being me, this um, this excerpt is of course about language and um, more more than that, it's about the meeting of two languages. Uh, in this case, Spanish and English. More than the midpoint between homegrown and Anglo, their tongue is a nebulous territory between what is dying out and what is not yet born. But not a hecatom. Makina senses in their tongue not a sudden absence, but a shrewd metamorphosis, a self-defensive shift. They might be talking in perfect Latin tongue, and without warning begin to talk in perfect Anglo tongue, and keep it up like that, alternating between a thing that believes itself to be perfect and a thing that believes itself to be perfect, morphing back and forth between two beasts until out of carelessness or clear intent they suddenly stop switching tongues and start speaking that other one. In it brims nostalgia for the land they left or never knew when they used the words with which they name objects, while actions are alluded to with an Anglo verb conjugated Latin style, pinning on a sonorous tale from back there. Using in one thong the word for a thing in the other makes the attributes of both resound. If you say give me fire when they say give me a light, what is not to be learned about fire, light and the act of giving? It's not another way of saying things, these are new things. The world happening in you, Makina realizes, promising other things, signifying other things, producing different objects. Who knows if they'll last? Who knows if these names will be adopted by all, she thinks. But there they are, doing their damnedest. So all the writing in this, in this book is like that, and I really enjoy that. But this book can also be read as other things. One of the ways to see this book is through um, through feminism because Makina is a very strong female character, I don't really like that term, but she's a very independent character. She knows what she wants, uh, she's very clear on her goals, she's used to getting her way and um, 
we see her through the entire book in interactions with lots of different people and where maybe the power balance you would think would be a bit skewed but they're always uh, more level than you'd think uh, in advance uh, like in the beginning of the book she's meeting up with three uh, the three big guys in her hometown uh, the three kind of mobster like mobster bosses uh, it seems but but she she's kind of on level with all of them and when she meets someone later in the book who gives her trouble she's perfectly able to take care of herself and uh, meanwhile also at times she's scared and uncertain and she's just a well-rounded character but but that's one way to see or read the book to look at all the individual uh, encounters she has with different people and look at the power balance in all of them and uh, who has the power and what gives them that power. That's a really interesting thing to look at in this book, I think. Another important thing about this book is how it deals with immigration or maybe even the broader term migration, um, about people being on the move and how this will change you no matter what you think of it going into it. You think you will be able to to stay the person you are in the beginning but all these new experiences you will necessarily be having from being um, from meeting up with different people different cultures that will necessarily change you and um, that's also a major part of this book and I'm just really impressed by how well this is described in such a short book and how much Makina changes throughout the story from the beginning to the end. Uh, I think that's really really well done and uh, really appreciated that. And also you can read this book on a more symbolical level uh, which I think the title more than hints to since it's called Signs Preceding the End of the World, the book doesn't really deal with the end of the world as such, even though the very first scene in the book describes massive sinkhole opening up in the middle of the street and swallowing a guy, and Makina narrowly escapes it herself. Um, that does kind of have this Armageddon feeling about it, but the rest of the book is perfectly uh, realistic and uh, it's not a dystopia, it's not, it doesn't really end, uh, deal with the end of the world in any way other than the symbolical uh, or more the maybe the end of the world as she knows it because by going on this journey her world will change and as a result of that, the world as she knows it will die or end. And this book deals with all the little things that makes that change uh, throughout not a really long period of time, uh, really. And I um, think the ending of the book needs to be uh, discussed in this in this way of viewing the book because it. I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but it has a very open ending. You can read the ending in different ways. And I think this kind of reading of the book will be necessary to know what the ending actually implies. And for me, it's kind of obvious what the ending implies, but I can see there are different readings uh, than my own. In, the, in here and um, some of them might be more sinister than the one I'm choosing to read into it but but I think I think this reading the, of the book as a symbolic journey is important and uh, to me that was what brought a lot of joy in, in the reading of it because there were so many details to notice and so many 
things going on between the lines and also things meaning uh, several things at once. And uh, yeah, it was a book that gave, gave me a lot to think about. It made me feel stuff, um, which it's been a while since a book made me do, actually, sadly. And um, yeah, I, I just really thought it, it was a very, very good book and I'm very glad uh, I got it. And also, for me, this was uh, a book I didn't pick up myself. Uh, I was sent this book uh, because of Project Annotate, which I will again link the original video describing what it is uh, downstairs. But basically it's a reading circle where we physically mail the books to each other and you annotate the books before you pass it along. And that really added to the reading experience of this book because when I got it there were... I'm just trying to find an example. Actually I'll just show you the last page. There's several people who's read the book before me and there's like discussions going on um, in the book. Asking questions, answering questions. What do you think this means? I think this. Would you think this implies such and such? And that was really fun, reading a book. Feeling I had the conversation with people um, who had read the book before me. Even though we, I, I'm aware you can have those kinds of discussion either real life or on Twitter or something. But this was also a fun way of doing it. Just having lots of scribblings all through and... Uh, and commenting on each other's comments as well. So yeah, this is a book I would definitely recommend. I know he's got another book out in English that I'm gonna be getting my hands into. I might even buy this one because I think this is a book I will want to be rereading at some point and um, see what I missed the first time around uh, because I think this is a book um, that will stand up to being read again and again uh, and that I will be able to find something new um, in the second and third and fourth reading as well. So yeah, if you haven't read this I would definitely recommend picking it up. <laughs>